Good morning, everybody. Good morning from the Philippines. Man, what a nice day. Well, what I was showing there as the video was opening up was that the guys painted in all of this above me. It's already been primered, but now it's all painted. And uh, they primered and painted these big columns in front. Check this out. Wish you could see just how smooth the texturing all is on it. It looks so good. Very, very good. I mean, just nice. Very proud of these guys, man. I am. Very proud of them. So this is in coffee. I'm having me some all-natural lemon hot tea. Man, this is a herbal tea right here. Oh, it is so delicious. And the aroma is so nice. So right here in front of him, this little band, this little small band right here. From right here that has been naked and if you see that's right with the precast and coming across the precast we had it stone below but to fill it in with an even line around the house I've had Ambin stoning that um, coming around this is where he stopped at yesterday now we haven't painted this wall here yet so if you see stuff on that we hadn't got to that it's looking so nice though it's all of it is looking so nice Mel and I ran yesterday evening to City Hardware and bought some of that Weber heavy-duty tile adhesive again uh, so Joel can continue his work he calls these frames these those little borders to put on the corner of tile um, it needs just they can need it two pieces but I got some spares because um, I almost bet he's gonna need some of this little CR right here as well and I bought different color tiles in those boxes that match with the tiling of the style the group that I'm putting around the verandas up there and likes on these front steps so these are some different colors of the same texture of the same tile company that I'm going to attempt to make that Texas star that's going to go right outside my front door there. Um, don't know how quick we're going to get on that. I want to make sure all the guys are finished up there painting and doing work all near our front door. But it's getting pretty close to it. And I want to go ahead and get them while they still have them because all of a sudden maybe they don't have any of that style tile anymore. And... I won't be able to get something that I would be happy with. So when you see it in the Philippines and you want it, if you got the budget for it, you better get it because it may not be there next time. So I stopped Joel on finishing the tile in here because I need him to grout this other CR that he's grouting out there on the other side. So he's been working on that today. And uh, he only has a few tiles left in here. He might be able to get over it this afternoon. They just came back from lunch. Well, we are down here on the front of the house. It's gonna be a noisy air compressor. The first thing I built when we bought this lot long ago was I built just a garage only. And the garage only stood by itself for a good while. Full of crap at the moment between shipping boxes, the boat project, and the house project. But in the beginning, I cast formed this garage. The ones I had working, man, they had never seen cast form. They fought me tooth and nail the whole way. But this is the earliest thing we did of cast forming. They were just absolutely and 100% defiance of helping 
build it in a cast form. They just could not wrap their minds around it. Hold that right there. Hold that right there. Yeah, how long has it been since it's been started? A long time, right? When we were coating the roof up here, the day we were rolling this on, I started it. So that's been a long time. It starts first pull every time. It has electric start also, but I don't use it. So a water one should be tapered right here. So as you screw it in, it gets tighter and tighter on threads. An electric one's just a straight, flat run there on the threads. But here, they must use the exact same mold uh, where the company that supplies all these into the country. And the water ones have no taper. The water ones, the electric ones, look identical. Just a different color PVC. Um, of course, the electrical PVC has another compound in it that's supposed to make it safer for electricity so uh but no change in the mold and you see it's just really poorly molded no matter which ones you grab this is different ones than the ones i showed you the other day so we got our wire in the box right there and i've got ammon doing some touch-ups underneath this front a little balcony right here and then uh, where we chip through and we put this drain tube we got him going around getting that all skim coated up real good and then we will be primering and painting underneath here so up here on top of the house we are going to be building that pergola up here soon and the roof over the top of this and i'm going to need a staircase going up there so i just got done marking out right here where the staircase is going to be i've been marking it out right here and we're marking the safe zones where we can drill into the concrete and where we're going to miss uh, some conduit areas and stuff that we need to avoid not to hit conduit in the wall but it came out perfect <laughs> that was just by pure luck it came out perfect right around the window up here where this water tank is it's lower than the roof up here on top of the house so I'm creating that as my landing and then behind that water tank you'll turn and you'll go up one step onto the roof the water tank, I'm gonna be moving it over to that side. It's got a lot of room to move over. And so it'll be over there and that'll make a big, nice flat area to walk up on and turn and go up onto the roof deck. Just about to get started on doing a little cooking inside the house and they shouted at me that they delivered stone for the gaming cages. The driver claims that he's got a second truck too. He told me that before and it was like five or six days later. <laughs> But man, I'm not gonna complain, man. I'm happy to get this stone. So that's 10 cubic meters of it there. And we've had gaming cages just setting that project came to a standstill because no stone.
I tell you, man, when'd you lose your tail? Huh? I thought monkeys had a tail. <laughs> it's break time, Mike. Take a break. Show you all what I got going on right here. Man, look at these bad boys now. I mean, these are some bad, bad, bad boys. Man. Man, what'd you say they are, Mel? Boy, I'm telling you. Man, look at that lady come by here selling them, boy. We jumped on that. Man, is that nice or what? These things are so delicious. My sous chef was getting my ingredients ready for me just now. Some garlic, onion, and tomato. So at Thanksgiving, I need to use this oven to cook those turkeys. And I didn't want to take it outside, and I didn't want five hours of heat inside the house when we're about to have guests that same day, and it'd be like an oven in there. The oven would make our house like an oven. So I had the boys to grab this stove up out of the kitchen, across the way right over there where the kitchen's going to be, and put it in this front bedroom that we've never finished because we've been using it for storage in here. Get this butter melting down right here, boys. It's gonna be some tasty, tasty, tasty shrimp. Every time we get these great big old freshwater prawns, man, they are nothing but larping, terrapin. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some of this Slappy Mama right into that butter. And now I've had people say, oh, you gotta peel back the shell and inject the seasoning on the shell, or why don't you peel them and all that, the seasoning don't get in. It gets in. Plus, if uh, you eat like we do, you eat with your fingers. <laughs> uh, might add just a little bit of blackening seasoning in there with that, man. Because I like the flavor of that blackening as well. So we're going to do a little hybrid here between Slappy Mama and Zataran's blackening season. Man, it's going to be so good. But yeah, if you eat with your fingers like we do... <laughs> You, you're going to lick all that spice off your fingers anyway. You're still getting it. You can get nice, big, full-size onions here now. All right, that's got the onion there. Now we're going to throw this tomato and garlic. Get it on in there. Oh, man, that smells so good already, boy. This would be some good eating right here without even putting the shrimp in. <laughs> Man, the aroma of that butter. And this is that nice imported butter from Europe. And man, with that nice creamy butter, boy, it's just some good stuff. Along with that Zataran's blackening and that Slap Your Mama. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, this is some good smells. I'm gonna grill up a little steaks too. I some money to get the charcoal going for me there. Head and all, that's right. All right, boy, check that out right there. I've been in here and flipped them over a couple times. Now, what I'm about to do here is highly controversial. <laughs> I'm about to dump this uh, black rice right here all in there with that. Yes, I am. Oh man, the smell of that steak too, boy. These are just some good smells going on around here today. Ooh, man. Does that smell good? This is some of that Australian beef. Leave it on there just a minute more. This charcoal here don't get quite as hot. It's like some of those little briquettes. Till it really gets to going or you gotta fan it a lot. But uh, I like it where it gets really super hot and sizzling. And then you throw that down on there and you just hear that That's what I like. Man, oh man, oh man. Got some nice little radish and tomato and cucumber salad. I chopped part of my steak down. I'm sharing it with Denise. Where is G-Lai? I'm sure this one will like that too. 
Yeah, because we got plenty of shrimp here, so I'll just eat a little small portion of steak. Share the rest okay. off to the kids. Bow, bow. So, boy, here it is right here. We're fixing to munch down. Appreciate y'all watching this video. We're going to see uh, how this all tastes. Man, oh, man, oh, man, it looks good. I'm waiting for you to dig into that shrimp. It's hot. Yeah, I let them sit for a while. I thought maybe that cooled down, but it's still steaming, huh? Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's hot. You want my fork, too? You can double. Oh, you got two forks on your plate. You are a double forker. Just put it in there. I know you're going to be clearing that head out here in just a little bit. Ooh, lobster. <laughs> well, I tell you, when you cut into it, it looks just like you're eating lobster. Mm. It's hot, ain't it? Mm. I've seen them eyes closed, so I know it was good. <laughs> but hot, huh? Well, everybody, it's afternoon right now. This morning I was up here, and I marked out for the staircase going down this wall. Show my, my, how I want to lay it out and see it here. I don't want to drill down into this roof deck to attach this. So what I've had my mock to do is put some extra coats. You can see there's a different color here of that roof coating on here. And then I tell him to build this, this base right here, this box, but it's not drilled into the concrete. And to pour this base and it'll be kind of heavy. And then from there to run his steel up and to go ahead and bring it up right here and go ahead and drill into the sidewall where the water tank's at. And he's doing a really good job. He's doing the way he knows I like it. Putting uh, marine epoxy around the steel, shoving it in so that it'll hold and lock that in. And then, same thing, we can't be drilling down this sidewall either because there is my main breaker box right on the side of this wall right here. And conduits from all over the entire house go up in that wall and actually underneath this step right here in this concrete deck too. So we do not want to be drilling into it. But it's just a short little staircase. And when he sets that and sets the steel anchored in nice and tight up there, nice 16mm and 10, well then um, it's not going to be able to go anywhere. Now the next thing that will happen, we will be coming back and tiling this whole deck. And this deck's gonna get kind of like a thick mortar base in it. And when it does, that's gonna go in and lock all around that little bottom part that's just gonna be sitting right there on the concrete. Up here, the guys continue painting all of this molding, this precast molding all around the front windows, putting coat after coat on. Same thing here, they continue to add coats. Uh, we got the wiring all pulled in for the new light boxes up there. And I ordered lights online on Lazada. Isn't this nice looking? They're getting this all clean painted. That's primer and paint both on there. The moldings right there, the crown around the top of that. It's looking so nice. It taped it off all nice and neat the way I asked. Uh, getting this all in order underneath here. You see how it was this morning. And it's looking really good up there right now. Looking very nice. The house overall is just looking so beautiful. All those crown molds right up there. Those little overhangs that I added. Man. That is just the icing on the cake right there. It is just so beautiful. Just nice finishing off piece. All the columns are painted now. All underneath up there is all painted. And uh, I told them to start underneath here now. This is just skim coat. Start cleaning it up to primer and paint everywhere as well.
just gotta watch that fiber wire up there. That small one. Hey, watch your feet, man. <laughs> That's, that rock comes out fast. Well, I want to share something else with you all that goes back maybe before I actually even started the vlog. I can't remember, but I'm going to share it right now. And that's here at my front gates. So you see this white column, this white column, this white column, that white column. They've never moved. Not even an eighth inch, not even a quarter inch. No settling, no twisting, no bending, no gates out of alignment. When we slide this rod on this gate, it is dead on accurate every day, year after year. And one of the reasons why is con starting from that, that corner column of where we built the garage to that column, to this one underneath here, all the way across. And now you can see it right here is a big old beam. You see that beam? So those aren't just columns dug in the ground freestanding with a footing or something on them. Those are columns with a footing and with a tie beam on them, connecting each one of these across as one solid unit all the way across. And it's a big old beam now. So not only does it retain my soil and stuff inside my lot, but you dig down and out there, that is a big old beam. And that way we never have to worry about shifting and settling. <laughs> 